Hello and welcome. My name is Stuart Garlick. I'm part of the website charmoffensive.aa and this is a collaboration with cassette.aa. We're talking to the band Eyewear Experiment, whose new album and single Patience are out on all good retailers right now. Hi guys. So, sitting Hi, on the sir. left is Hando Yaxi. Hello. Johanna Enmar. Hi. And Mick Simpson. Hi. So, guys, um, and feel free for anyone to answer this. Um, for people who've not heard you before, Patience, could you introduce yourselves and introduce the kind of sound that you feel you make? Uh, we're from uh, Tallinn, Estonia. Uh, I guess we are, you could call electro-pop, but with the more uh, darker or punchier side. We like to believe, at least, ourselves. And uh, we've been together for three years, and now we have re released our debut album, and we are trying to break out of the Baltics and introduce us to the world. And it's important to break out of the Baltics, you think? Of course, yeah. because like compared to all other regions in the world, uh, Baltics is such a small piece of land, and 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 I think there are some people across Europe who would like to hear what we do and see what we do on stage so actually yeah. we're gonna it's, it's like next week the <laughs> same same day we're gonna have our first uh concert uh, in first denmark in denmark yeah yeah okay so um have you traveled to denmark before uh yeah no. i have been i love that city i've been to roskilde mm -hmm. so i was flew through denmark had some free time de there of course, you cannot skip the Christiania region, <laughs> and and I love it. I love it. We're gonna we're not gonna be at Denmark that much, but it's it's a beautiful city. It's one of my one of my favorite cities I've been to. That must be one of the most thrilling things about you know starting to make it big. The fact that you get to see other countries for the first time sometimes. I mean, um, is there a place that you're looking forward to going to soon, or a place that you that you would like to go to with the band? For me, I always like uh, Prague really really much and I think like maybe 10 or, or 12 years ago I went there with my mates and and uh, it was a uh, first of all it was like culturally and visually it was such a beautiful uh, town and of course the nightlife there is insane and it would be really cool to play there because I feel like that uh, Czech people are really warm and and they 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 like the music we do as as our some of our songs have been played in uh, different radio stations and 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 featured in different like websites in, in Czech Republic so I'm really looking forward to that yeah and, and th th there's a whole collision of different sounds in your music it's not uh, it's not particularly of any particular country or culture it yeah. sounds like a mishmash of lots of different influences but who were your musical heroes each of you growing up and who, who are the people who most influence you now I'll take this one <laughs> first. Sure. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> for me, I guess it started um, just the love for music when I got my first Walkman. I guess it was like seven years old or before that I had cassettes. I loved cassettes. And just they were like lying around in the household, like two cassettes were right lying around. I like listened to them endlessly. But the first kind of musical that I felt like really inspired and I was like, oh, I want to do this is when we got cable TV and there was like MTV and VH1 and this was like German channels like Viva and Viva Plus. I remember uh, seeing and hearing uh, Offspring Self-Esteem and Prodigy is Poison and uh, No Good, Stop the Dance. Those, I think those are the three videos and songs that had like the most epic impact. I was like in the second grade I went to school, I didn't understand what they were singing about, but I remembered the melody, and it was just like in gibberish, I was singing it to my to my desk mate, saying like, hey man, you check out this band, like, <laughs> it's like, like, it's like, this is like, this is the shit, you know, this is, this is good. So I was like, what, in second grade, you're like nine years old? And that basically was, and then it was just like, kept coming, there was just Nirvana, it was definitely Notorious B.I.G., Puff Daddy, Buster Rhymes when disaster 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 strikes it's like an epic album for me and like so it's like basically just everything just kind of sucked in and now I think when Hondo will answer it he will answer the people who who inspire inspire me now but uh, aside from uh, bands <laughs> I guess I would say like Jojo Mayer the drummer he's very influential and and a teacher Mike Johnston and um, 
a lot of bands actually like yeah uh, St. Vincent Nine Inch Nails definitely uh, for me okay and Prodigy the Prodigy is uh, like unquestionably one of the one of the greatest bands ever I think okay uh, and strong well, statement <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll come back to the Prodigy and St. Vincent yeah. and Nine Inch Nails in a moment, but uh, Johanna, who who were your musical heroes growing up? Well, Spice Girls, of course. Of course. <laughs> I mean, that comes through in the sound yeah. of the band totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, I, was, and I was Emma. Also. Yeah, outfits. I was Emma, light blue and baby blue. <laughs> Sorry, which one was the Emma? The baby, blonde. Baby Spice. The cutest. Oh, she was hot. The innocent one. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, the platforms. She was definitely my <laughs> favourite as well. <laughs> So yeah, I really liked um, Estonian bands like Terminator and Smilers, but I, I was a kid, you know. Yeah. I had cassettes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but after that, I heard I was listening to Portishead and uh, Coco Rosie and I don't know. Right now, FK Twigs and everything that comes along. Awesome. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> I think there's that stage, isn't there, when you're about 13 or 14, when your tastes start to migrate towards, you know, things that you think are cool or things that your friends think are cool. Is That uh, that, that was the case for me growing up. But, um, I mean, now that music's more private and now that we all have Spotify playlists of our own and that kind of thing, do you think it's still as important to actually identify with cool music that other people like? Or is it is it more of a personal thing these days? That's a crazy question. Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm also a teacher, and so I, I, I <clears throat> ask my students a lot of times to bring yeah. me music. And some of them have sent me some really underground, interesting, like, I wouldn't say only EDM, but drum and bass th- stuff from SoundCloud. And I was like, oh my God, how did like they find it? So, yeah. And that's not in the mainstream at all. So, of course, people are different and so on, but they have, like, really young people that really surprised me, and I have really wondered how did they get there. Maybe it's the older brother. I, I, I doubt it's the 50-year-old parents who listen to that music on SoundCloud. <laughs> but I think I think it, it, ha- it has been always the same, and I think it will be always the same, that there are, of course, like, the majority listen, listening to those mainstream radios and, and, and really, like... Um, taking everything that's that's hip and cool and uh, like at the moment, but but there will always be those those alternative guys who like paint their nails or I don't know what what yeah. do kids do nowadays? I mean, I, I painted my nails. No, no, but you are old. Nick, you're yeah, no, old. No, 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 <laughs> but like the the young guys, like is is the painting thing and doing like this emo no, stuff. No, that's that's like. But what what is, what is the new alternative well, like thing right I re- now? I read that uh, new kids are like the younger kids are trying to be somebody and uh, just but who like Kardashians? No, no, Holy no, no. Uh, they're they're learning and trying to be intelligent. Intelligent. Ah. They're like. Um, that, but that's good. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> they're not. Yeah. So but, totally hijacked the question here. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what I wanted to say is that I think there will always be those alternative people who listen to like some really weird shit, and and I think like at least some of us were did all, also that thing that li- they listened like we listened to. Um, I I remember like the first time I listened to Dillinger Escape Plan or like Maros Volta. That's like like if 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 I would play. That's the cool stuff. That's the sauce. That's the so yeah, but but for normal people it's like insanity. Yeah, it's like devil's music, you know. Well, I remember f- thinking about devil's music the first time I heard Aphex Twin. I thought, what uh, the hell is this? <laughs> this is not music, you know. And um, I I was I was really young at the time. I think it was when Window Licker first came on MTV. And yeah. um, um, but but the thing is, something like Aphex Twin or like Prodigy um, or. What, not prodigy, but like the really fringe stuff, the stuff that wouldn't always get on radio. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot easier to stumble upon it accidentally, thanks to SoundCloud and Spotify and all those other yeah. things, isn't it? Yeah. But it's more harder to find. I, I have tried searching for new cool stuff. Like sometimes you like you have your favorite records, you have your prepara- uh, preparations, but then you're like, okay, I want to find something cool. And when you go on that quest, I have never come up with good results. But then you are at the party party is already late then you hear the great songs like this is the greatest song ever this is what i need and then you forget it you can shazam it but it's gone yeah. <laughs> because you, just, you will lose your phone or something <laughs> i was just saying that at the um i think it was trent Reznor who said like there's like about music there are more means to make music and there's more music in the world but that doesn't make there is more 
better music because of that. Yeah. So I think even the cool stuff, or like I said, like FX Twin or something, it's much more harder to find because there's so much information there. Yeah, and also Tom York said that uh, there are only eight notes and uh, we've almost used all the combinations we possibly can of those notes yeah. in pop music. So, I mean, the fact that we are at that stage where pop music's becoming quite, quite an old medium now, yeah. do you feel a bit more beholden to all your influences now or can you still make new music, genuinely new stuff? For me, I really don't think about that. I like For me, like every song has its like identity or soul. So uh, when I do something, and, and that's the, that was one of the things that when we started our experiment, that, that we made this agreement that we will not be like a, uh, like a rock and roll band or a, like, a, like some ambient weird like indie stuff, indie band, but we'll just do songs that uh, are cool for us and that which and we'll do just songs that influence or like go into our hearts. So. Um, I'm not. I'm. I'm never thinking about that, that. That or maybe it sounds a little bit too much like this or that, or it should sound a little bit more like, like Radiohead or or whatever, whatever. Yeah. It's just like, um, I think, it would be wise to give the song a chance to have its own life and its own identity, and and that's why and that's why our songs like tend to sound a little bit different from each each other. Because you know you can't put like an like a EDM uh, bass drop to patience <laughs> or or, yeah. or or something like that because then it will be uh, like a, a just another EDM song you hear it from. Yeah, there are like no borders, there are no limitations. Like and that's that's what the, I guess what the experiment in the in the in a band name also kind of emphasizes. So. Uh, if we talk about Patience the album for a moment, um, this is your first, in old-fashioned terms, long player. Yeah. Um, it, but it's um, it's it's only eight tracks long, which suggests to me a sort of strong sense of quality control there. Were, were you planning to make it short, you know, to be a sort of short and sweet debut? I think the only, like, rule we had was that there won't be any fillers, yeah. because um, what's the point... Of having them on the on the album and and um, um, we we had like twenty four or twenty five songs and uh, then we um, like picked the 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 good ones from the bad and then at one moment we had I think twelve songs and and then we continued with twelve songs and then and and, and so in the end uh, there were eight left and and. Uh, those ones w which were left out were not left beca out because they were like like shit songs but but at that moment we felt like like um our um our skills are not up to that level to finalize that song as good as the song deserves you know well and it leaves you a whole battery of songs that you can use in the future as well doesn't yeah. it it's it's always like a uh, like a like a one helping hand that that is as always waiting you in that folder. If nothing works, you can start like tweaking the old songs. And maybe something something will come out, out from them. Yeah, and um, th there's a whole range of styles there. I mean, um, uh, even though the album is named Patience, actually the actually the song Patience is a bit of an outlier. It's quite different to the rest of the album, isn't it? Yeah. Was that a deliberate thing on your part? No, it's exactly how it turned out. Yeah. It's kind of patience turned out the way it did, and we didn't think about it like in any terms of sh do's and don'ts or should we or shouldn't we. I actually cannot hear that of kind of a difference myself, but I understand where people get that notion, you know. Um, so it just fit perfectly as as the as the opening track. open opening track. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And uh, you, you also open concerts, or you open the Talent Music Week concert at least yeah. with Patience. And yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I I thought it was a pretty I'm going to use the word ballsy move actually because uh, uh, most bands save their biggest hit until last. I know that there were particular restrictions around a showcase set yeah. which you've mentioned before, but um, did did you did you feel that uh, you got the crowd behind you by opening with that big song first? Well, to be honest with you. 
<laughs> then uh, that fucking song doesn't fit anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, it just it just it just doesn't work anywhere else. And 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 as like I think most people who were there um, like knew that song. Then we thought like it would be like not very wise to leave it out. So uh, we modified it a little bit and and tried to make it like more dynamical. Uh, and, and it's it's a hybrid between the acoustic version and the, and the album version actually, yeah. And uh, a funny thing was that Estelaul, or at, at least because Patience has done so so well, people constantly asked like, okay, like uh, so, what are the rest of the songs? Like, is this your best song? Or, like everybody liked it, and we said, well, like this is a very good song, but we don't think at all it's the strongest song on the album. So there was kind of a very strong card to hold, or like a very made us very happy. It's like oh, check out, like, everybody's digging this song, but wait till you hear the album, like, we think they're, like, amazing bangers there, like, different kind of sounding stuff there as well, so that that, that was a very kind of um, cool thing that happened. Yeah, and the, the song that most impressed me is Wanting For More, and... Um, really? Yeah, I, I, I feel like... Uh, well, I feel like the drumming is great on it, for, for one you. thing, and... Um, I didn't think of the beat. <laughs> yeah, but I, it, I, I mean, it, it's 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 really it's really aggressive drumming, and um, and you know, a, a, it 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 starts it starts off in such a mellow way, and it builds up to that crescendo. I think yeah. I think it's got a really good production about it. But also, I want to mention Johanna's voice. Your, your voice sounds. Um, you mentioned Portis Head. It sounds a lot like Beth Gibbons on that track. Hmm. I think. I mean, yeah. uh, um, have um. I mean, obviously, we're all influenced by different singers, but like, uh, do you find that uh, if you've been listening to someone, someone for a while, that uh, you know, whether indirectly or directly, a voice changes to match a bit more that singer? Oh no, I think I I'm not that skilled, <laughs> and I I can't do what what I hear. Uh, I uh, one song I don't remember which one I thought about, uh, Kimbra. But I can't remember which. which yeah, song. that was one of the songs that were left out uh, from the album. Okay. And there, there was this moment. I remember we were doing the the demo vo- vocals, and and Johanna was singing, and then at one moment she was like, "Ah, oh, shit! It it sounds too much like like Kimbro. Maybe we should like <laughs> do something different, but nothing else worked so well there. So it was like a like a little bit like a, a dilemma, but. Uh, but I think we will come back to that song in the future because uh, because it has a very good vibe. Mm. A very very dirty name though. <laughs> like get <laughs> get bent was the oh, yeah. uh, the name of the song. Okay. <laughs> oh, I think uh, Deep Priest has uh, something. Um, Iris's uh, voice touch. Like the whispering thing. Like, Hi, uh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So deep freeze has a real aggression to it. I mean, it sounds uh, sounds a lot like something from Always Outnumbered, Never Outgun, the Prodigy album. Um, but um, in what way did you think when you made that that's going to be a single? That's that's going to be a big release for us. Who wants to answer that? You you go first. Um, that was the first song that that everybody really like felt that oh, this must be like the the. Um, the the first single of the album because it was like the idea of the song was strong and we just had like we had to have uh, much time like uh, like quite quite long period of time where we could like tweak the sound so everything would sound as we we imagined in in our heads uh, and 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 that was and and then the patience song came and and it was chosen to Estee Lauder and then that ruined the whole plan. Yeah, because Steve Frisk <laughs> was planned for be the first single. Yeah, but we didn't see the Estee Lauder coming. Yeah, uh, and, yeah. and and with Deep Freeze, the the thing like I'm the, I have this very vivid m- memory when um, uh, it was the first time we we played Deep Freeze and we were doing like a uh, like a playing at one party in in Tartu. And it was that we had been in the studio for ten months then, and uh, nobody besides our like crew had had heard the songs, so we did the we did, that was the first time we did uh, we played that song live, and uh, just after the gig we were like almost in tears because 
uh, it, the the feedback from the audience was so instant, yeah. and and it was like people went mental. They were dancing, and, yeah. And even the, and after the second chorus, they were singing along, <laughs> yeah. and the, when we played it as an encore, yeah, as well, and wow. it just worked. And we came backstage, looked at each other. I remember I hugged Hando, and was like, just like. This is what like eight eight months of work in in three and a half minutes, <laughs> and it worked. Like yeah. it worked. Like the test subjects bought it, so it, it was a very cool moment. Yeah. Well, well, and that's an example of something that came together very quickly in terms of the reaction and you know how quickly people adapted to it. But yeah. as a band, you've been around for a while. I think you um, released your first uh, EP in twenty thirteen, didn't you? Crickets Empire One. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, and so it's it's not it's been a long process of slow burn growth for you guys. Yeah. How much better do you think that is than like achieving instant fame through a TV show or something? I think we should be very happy that everything has gone the way it has, because uh, during those years we have like like creating the while creating the songs we have made so many mistakes and we have also learned so much so the learning curve has been like insane and 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 I'm very ha happy that we had that we have had that journey because uh, right now we are much better songwriters we are much better like at, at tweaking the sounds and and our ears are much more developed I don't it sounds weird yeah. but but it's it's true you know <laughs> Uh, and and I think it's a very like a natural organic way, and 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 uh, if we had if we would have like gained like instant success, uh, I think uh, the the patience album or like the first whatever named uh, like LP would not sound so good and the songs would not be so good as well. I think. And if you make it instantly, like you. I, I kind of feel that a lot of people who have made it instantly they um, they might lack the appreciation for it or the or the gratefulness because there hasn't been a struggle or there hasn't been a journey from A to B it's just been just like from one to zero like just like that you know so um, seeing like being on the road and seeing all those difficulties and learning how to deal with each other and, and the situations that may arise is just so helpful and then and it just like makes you so much stronger yeah. I was thinking as well about how um, popular music is almost the only medium where people are expected to be at their best when they debut. I mean, if you're an author, then you're expected to get better as you get older. And, yeah. you know, the the new Radiohead song shows that it's possible to develop your sound. But yeah. are you hoping <laughs> that when you're all much older, assuming you're still together, that you'll be making your best work then and not now? Of course. Of course, yeah, absolutely. I, I, some of the demos we did... Uh, like the 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 last demos we did for for uh, uh, this album, uh, which were were not unfortunately like uh, they didn't uh, make the cut, but they are already sounded much better than than the than than, than the stuff that's that's on the album. So it was so such so nice to like really put use that uh, that knowledge we gained while uh, like doing and mixing and, and and stuff like that so and even doing it after so many years also in different bands at least i have the feeling that we're we're not just getting started we're only getting warmed up you know yeah. it's just like it's just just it's just the beginning and so much ideas and 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 visions we we want to like achieve and, and do so i'm very excited to start doing the new stuff